What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is The Sweet Life or Sweet Life Season 1, Episode 6, I think we're on to Episode 6. So we are still in Cabo for Tylen's birthday, and her and Candace are still arguing. Now listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Unless this thing was edited and chopped and screwed, I'm with Candace. Candace said, you know, Tylen said, I don't want to have this conversation with you on camera. I don't want to talk about it on camera. I feel like whatever her issue is with Candace is deep and she doesn't really want to expose because she was like, I didn't want to get into this on camera, you know, and have a big blow up on camera for, you know, for her sake. So I feel like whatever Tylen has to say to her is deep and it is deeper than, okay, I don't want all our business out here in these streets on this show. So let's just keep it real surface. But then my thing is, then if you know you already have issues with Candace and you know Candace is who she is, you invited her, knowing the cameras were going to be there, then when she started doing what the fuck it is that she does, you can't get mad. She is who she is. And you've said, we've been friends since high school, she's always been selfish, she's always been this, and, we've all, and we have deeper issues. Then you know what she brings to the table. It's not fair to her to get mad. At her being who she is. And you knew who she was when you invited her. You know, she said, Tylen was like, I don't want to talk about it on camera. I don't want to talk about it. And Candace was like, okay. And she was like, but you don't get it. You don't get it. She was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, okay. Like, I said, okay. It's like you just insist on wanting to argue with me. I said, okay. Anyway. Then we go down to the party, girl. Cheryl and got into that tequila. She twerking all up on Gerald. Listen, my thing is this. That's your man. You can twerk all over you. You want to twerk on your man, over your man. All, 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 that's your man. Twerk until you have twerked out, okay? Um. Then we see Bree flirting with um Jordan. And to Jordan's credit, Jordan was like, yeah, this is not a good idea. Like, I do. I'm feeling you. And I know that if I allow myself to go there and you allow yourself to go there, then it's going to go there. And then tomorrow morning, we both going to be feeling some kind of way. So she was trying to get him to take shots and stuff. And he was like, nope, not doing it. Mm -mm, nope, not taking no shots. Nope, nope, nope. And so to his credit, he is very much cognizant of his limitations. And he sort of walked away. So then Bree started um, flirting with, um, what's his name? Cameron, I think his name is. And... She's, you know, she was like, truth or dare? And he said truth, which I think she expected him to say dare. So then once she said, once he said truth, she was like, truth. He was like, yeah, truth. So then she had to come up with something. So she going to ask him, when was the last time you had sex raw? And he was taken aback and her friends were taken aback and everybody was just kind of like, the hell? Like, he, did you just legit ass when was the last time you had he was like i stay strapped like i don't know what you're talking about i stay strapped and she was like mm, i don't know you sometimes people get caught slipping he was like i don't never get caught slipping so i was just like if you flirting and you're interested i just and i know that they're young and so their mindset ain't where my mindset is but that's just not a way to get to know somebody is to come at them from sex like if that's not what you want now if all you want is a fling in cabo then go for your fling in cabo you know what i'm saying um then we see PJ and Becca talking. Now, PJ said that she's been acting kind of funny towards him and she's been, you know, you know, side-eyeing him or whatever the situation is. And they haven't really been vibing like she thought they would be vibing, at, you know, on the trip or whatever. This is how I feel about it. They did the flashback to what she said about giving head and the first time you with somebody, you know, if they don't go down on you kind of thing. And I feel like maybe low-key Becca was talking about PJ and that's why PJ got in his feelings because he knew that when they had sex, he ain't give her no head. And she started talking about how much she like head and how, how important it is to her. And I feel like she was throwing him a subliminal. He caught the subliminal and his, his response to the subliminal was to get in his feelings about it instead of having a conversation. Which she should have had a conversation with him and he should have had a conversation with her. Listen, let me tell y'all something, people. And again, I know this is these, these, these are young folk. But let's be clear. It is okay to have an honest conversation about sex and what your needs are, what your wants are, what you like doing in the bedroom, what you don't like doing in the bedroom. Like those are important conversations and those are adult conversations. And the way to do it is to not so throw subliminals while you're at a table full of other people that may or may not think you're talking about him because they know that the two of y'all hanging out. You see what I'm saying? That's not cute. Um... 
And so he was like, you know, basically it was that, well, you've been acting funny. I ain't been acting funny. You've been acting funny. I ain't been acting funny. All right, well, let's make it happen. Okay, let's make it happen. Well, you the one that's been like, I'm matching your energy. It was that kind. It was very much that conversation. Instead of them talking about what's really going on, they are talking in abstracts. Like, instead of having a, a, a straightforward conversation saying, listen, we were hanging out, you know, before, you know, we left LA and I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity for us to spend some really good time together, but we ain't really been able to do that. Like, let's make a concerted effort. Tomorrow is a beach day. Let let it be me and you. Let's go find a little quiet place on the beach and let's go hang out for a couple of hours. We can get back to the rest of the group, but let me and you, let's, let's find some time for just me and you tomorrow. So anyway, the next day, like I just said, it's a beach day. Cheryl got a hangover, child. Kaylin got, look, everybody got a hangover from the from the, the shenanigans of the night. Not everybody, but Amanda is still feeling some kind of way because her man ain't there. But, you know, she called him on the FaceTime and then the rest of the guys come over and they have like a little conversation. And so she brings up the thing that Bree said about a man paying her bills. And Amanda was like, I understand where Bree is coming from, but at the same time, I don't know how I feel about like if that's what my expectation like I would love for it to be the I would love for it to be the case but I don't know if that's the expectation and so she asked her boyfriend about it and he was like yeah 50 50 he was like I'm not saying it has to be 50 50 but what I'm but what it ain't gonna be is one like I can't it ain't 100 percent now this is what I'm gonna say about the not being 100 percent situation is this I know that y'all balling like this is clearly a friend group that is in a good financial place. Let's let's be clear. But everybody ain't in that place. Bree, you ain't in that place. And I, I feel like, I, you know, I'm one of those people that I feel like for you to have the expectation that somebody is bringing something to the table that you ain't bringing to the table or that you can't bring to the table, I think it's a little, I think that's a little bit much. I think that's a little bit much. So for you to be like, he need to be paying all my, you know, paying the bills, paying the rent, doing this and doing that. Y'all not like, Girl, I just think that's a bit much to ask, you know, and everybody's not in the place to do it. So if a man can't afford to pay all the bills, like, what if you met him and he had a roommate? He clearly wasn't paying all the bills then. So now, now what? And Jordan, who is balling, was like, oh, no, that's a problem. He was like, and that's why I'm single now. That's why, well, I guess she ain't gonna never be my woman because I ain't doing that. And his thing was, I'm not saying that. I can't build into that. Like, you know, we get together, we things are going really well, and then at a certain point, I'm like, baby, I got this, you good? But that's not how we starting. Like, that's not where this is starting off. And I can see where he's coming from because, again, he does have a little bit of money. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I, I didn't mean that to be disrespectful, like a little bit of money, but I don't know his net worth. But he does, he, he is doing better than the average 20-year-old. And he does have to sort of protect that, that, you know, that energy and protect that people are coming for him from that perspective, right? So that night, so the, um, you know, they did water jet skiing and all that good stuff. So that night is the brown party. I like that Thailand. I like that it was a little bit different. It's not a white party, it's a brown party. And so we saw all these different hues of brown and tan and it was really, really nice. And so, you know, this is the actual birthday celebration and she's very thankful. She thanks all her friends for being there. And she says, you know, let's go around the room and let's talk about what it is that, you know, we've learned from ourselves and perspective from ourselves. And, you know, everybody go around the room. Well, they, they showed a few people. And one thing was funny. I thought that Candace was saying, Candace said something about people matching her energy and not having the expectation of somebody matching her energy. And she was like, I just feel like, you know, she still doesn't get it. She still doesn't get it. Whatever is going on between her and Candace is way deeper than what we're seeing on camera because none of it makes sense to me. Like, I get the whole she was late and it was rude. I got that part. But all of this, th this is deeper. And whatever it is, y'all need to just go on and go talk about it. And again, I feel like it wasn't fair to bring her on camera and hold her to a standard that you know she can't meet because you know who she is. Um, um, Cameron, the guy that Brie was flirting with the night before, he says that, you know, he's learned to take care of his mental health. He said he grew up with a single mom and he went through a lot of things and he dealt with a lot of trauma from having to be the man of the family, the man of the house at a very young age. And so he said he knows that that really screwed him up, but he is very much focused on 
taking care of his mental health. Jordan said that he's always been the kind of person to keep his feelings bottled up and not process his feelings. And so he's learned to be more open and more expressive about who he is and his feelings. So it was some good, it was some good things that was said and it was nice. And then they got her um, some really nice gifts, honey. They bought her some, um, they, all her friends took up a collection and they bought her some Louis Vuitton tennis shoes. Those were cute. Those Louis Vuitton. Sneakers were really, really cute. They were like, they they looked like, they, they were cute. They were like high top um, canvas, like denim. They were cute. And then they got her, I think it was a Prada bag. I think it was. I, I guess it was a Prada bag. I don't know. But it was cute. And she was, you know, of course she cried and she it meant a lot. She was very emotional about it. Um, and so, later on that night, we see um, Brie talking to Cameron. And they were flirting a little bit. And it was like, you know, I was peeping you today. Yeah, I was peeping you too. Oh, I was, you know, you've been looking real cute. Yeah, you've been looking kind of fine yourself. Like, it was like that conversation. And then she said, you know, I really appreciate what you shared earlier about the, you know, checking on your mental health. And, you know, I thought that was really, you know, deep for you to say that. And he was like, yeah. He said, you know, she said, you know, this is crazy that we've been around each other. But it's the first time we've had a chance to really kind of talk. And he was like, yeah, well, you know. Um, Tylen kind of told me to, you know, like, chill out on you. And so, of course, Brie was in her feelings about it, like, wait a minute, what? Like, why would she tell him not to fuck with me? Like, what's that about? And, um, but she didn't, you know, she kept that in her back pocket, and they continued to sort of flirt a little bit. And basically, they just decided that they was going to, you know, keep it where it was and, you know, let things flow the way they were going to flow. Either we, you know, either, you know, either they, they were going to, you know, make something happen or not. You know, they didn't put no... They didn't put no hard decisions on it. I, I think it was kind of when we get back to L.A., we'll just kind of see how things swing or whatever. So, um, the next day is their last day in um, Cabo. We see Jordan and PJ have a conversation. And PJ was like talking about how happy he was to finally clear the air with... Um, um, you know, with Bree and how, you know, it could have went left, but he made sure it didn't go left. It, it, it stayed center and, you know, um, and then PJ started talking about Becca and how, you know, he thinks maybe that's what's best that, you know, he said, I see how messy things got with you and Bree, you know, trying to date somebody that's in the same, you know, friend group. And I think maybe that's what I need to do with Becca because things just don't seem to kind of be, you know, running the way I thought they was going to run. And I, I feel like it could get really, really messy. So maybe it's best that I just sort of kind of just, you know, end things here and, you know, just let her know that I want to be just be friends. So it's a boat day. They're all on a yacht riding around down in Mexico. Everybody's having a good time. It is beautiful. I mean, again... A really, really nice experience. Listen, I'm on a party with y'all shit. I know I'm too old. I be the chaperone shit. Whatever. Um, but Bree talked to Tylen on the boat about, you know, I was talking to Cameron last night and he said that you kind of told me to um, you know, tell him to chill out on me. Like, what's that about? And Tylen was like, What's that about? Like, did we did we legit not just go through a whole situation with you and Jordan that basically brought everybody into the bullshit that could have caused problems between me and my boyfriend, problems between my boyfriend and him? Like, girl, I just feel like it's probably best that you not in involve yourself with anybody that I'm friends with. Because me and Cameron are really good friends and I really would hate to be put in the middle of that and have to make a decision. And so once she explained it, Brie was like, you know what, you're right. That's a good point and you are absolutely correct. And maybe I shouldn't, you know, involve myself with anybody that's a part of the friend group. And I realized that Tyler was really just looking out for me. Um, also, while they're on the boat... Um, PJ decides that's a good time to have a conversation with Becca and tell Becca he wants to just be friends. Now, Becca didn't give him no energy. Becca was like, all right, it's whatever. If that's how you feel, then that's how you feel. Like, wrong place, wrong time. We could have had this conversation when we got back. Hell, we could have had this conversation when we got back to L.A. for all that's worth. But but we on this boat, on this good water. I'm having a good time. And here you come with this bullshit. And now, I got to sit on the boat and keep up a smiley face for the rest of the time when I'm really feeling some kind of way and I'm really in my feelings a little bit. And everybody pretty much agrees that PJ was being an asshole, that he didn't have to do what he did um, on the boat with Becca. And of course, 
you know, Becca's energy, you know, like she didn't give him the energy, but her energy itself was just kind of over it. Cause I'm sure it came out of left field for her. Like, well, damn, I thought we was cool. And then after they have the conversation, he goes over with the guys and like, oh my gosh, I feel so much lighter now. Oh my goodness. I'm single, single. Like, sir, y'all are on a boat. Y'all are not in a mansion and you on the West Wing. She can hear you. She can hear you. So that's pretty much where this episode is the the next day they going home the party's over and it is back to reality but baby that is a hell of a trip i ain't mad about it um you know one day me and my friend group aspire to be to be like y'all that's all i can say about that okay private jets and mansions on the beach okay and, and yachts around the island i ain't mad about it i ain't mad about it but anyway it is what it is. That's where we ended. And they ended the night with fireworks. Again, she had fireworks for her birthday. I ain't mad about none of it. Okay? None of it. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Talk to y'all later. Peace.